What's the word, y'all? I just can't believe this is taking me so long. This is like take 25 of me trying to talk about the All-Star Reserves. Have y'all had so much to go through your mind that it becomes discombobulated and you can't get any of it out? That's what I'm going... Okay, let's talk about the NBA All-Star Reserves. In my mind, when I was watching this on TNT, I was waiting for the super snub moment. Somebody that 100% needed to be there, deserved to be there, that didn't make it. Or the I can't believe he made it thing. And for the most part, we didn't get... I guess it's up to your interpretation. We didn't get any of that. The only guy that surprised me was Chris Middleton. When they pulled out the envelope and read the name for the Milwaukee Bucks, Chris Middleton, Chris Middleton, I was like, really? Not saying that Chris Middleton's not an all-star caliber talent because I have to say that because I know there's 5% of Bucks fans that's going to watch this and be like, Kenny, can Chris Middleton does this. I understand how good Chris Middleton is. You're talking about a dude that four seasons ago, I was arguing on my podcast legit about to throw hands for Chris Middleton. I understand how good Chris Middleton is as a player. But I was surprised that he was there because when I think about All-Stars, when I put together my ballot, Chris Middleton was not a dude that was actively on it. And, and this is why I've been preaching for half a decade on this channel and my other channels that we need an All-Star re uh, reform. I would much rather have the 24 more, most deserving players make an All-Star team versus two guards, three fours, and two wildcard spots. Because what we've seen on both sides, at least in 2022, is that the wildcard spots are guards. And if you were to ask every coach slash every player who has to have a ballot, every media player, they probably would much rather have it so that you just pick the best players. But look, think about it from the coach's perspective. Think about the Eastern Conference and it comes to front court players. Who really is the competition? You got to go to the NBA voted thing. Who considered themselves a, a forward? So let me go through it. Bam Adebayo is a guy that should have been in conversations, but he missed so much time, he probably wasn't legitimately in conversations. We had Chris Middleton. Okay. Then we have Jared Allen. Jared Allen is a dude that was on my personal ballot. I, I felt since it was in Cleveland and then being such a surprising team and him being such impactful player on both sides of the ball, him being a vertical threat on offense and on defense, I just felt like he deserved that last four spot, but whatever. Um, Miles Bridges is another dude that might have been in conversations and then Pascal Siakam sneakily deserves to be in conversations, but he's overshadowed right now by Freddie playing so well and Gary Trent can't hit a shot currently I mean, can't miss a shot currently so like those are players that are probably going higher in the hierarchy to Pascal he's been kind of under the radar so the conversation or the people that were really there for front court it's not a lot so Chris Middleton being there congratulations it's similar to what I was saying in the Wiggins uh in the Wiggins video and I wish that I took a different perspective when I was talking about the Wiggins thing because it is very similar, right? When you take a look at both conferences, who's missing, who's injured in the front front court. When you talk about the LAs, you have um, Anthony Davis missed a lot of time. And he ain't really been looking like Anthony Davis. And then you got Paul George and Kawhi. Those are three players that have been guaranteed All Stars. They're all out. So who's the next man? In this case, it was Wiggins. Or in this case, I guess it is Chris Middleton. Dog, I just want the best players to be there. You can have the conversation to yourself if LaMelo Ball deserves to be over there for Chris Middleton. I would guess that majority of people would say it, it LaMelo Ball deserves it over Chris Middleton. But, I mean, at the end of the day, LaMelo Ball is a player, in my personal opinion, that will make multiple, multiple All-Stars in his career. So if he doesn't make it this year, hopefully that fuels him for next year. He'll be a lock. Or he used it like John Morant. Because I remember last year, John Morant was low-key at conversations but not really in conversations and he used that in motivation oh i'm gonna be a starter next season maybe Lamelo ball does something similar going into his third year but now let's talk about draymond green draymond green was on tnt he was talking about oh he announced i won't be there to play and then the conversation immediately on twitter turned to who's replacing him and majority of people want to see dejounte murray and i understand dejounte murray's having an all-star caliber season for sure but look think about the reserves does the replacement for Draymond Green have to be a forward? Because let's just take a look. Luke and Chris Paul, let's just say those are the first two guards. Then the forwards are Draymond, Car Anthony Towns, and Rudy Gobert. And then the two wild card spots is Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, whatever. If we're going strictly based on the way the ballot goes, Draymond Green's replacement should be a forward, right? Now, if the NBA says DeJounte Murray is his replacement, then why the hell do we have positions anyway? If the replacement for a lock position can be a different position, just get rid of it. It's kind of weird when you think about how many elite slash all-star caliber players that we're we're kind of missing right now. Um, of course, we just got Klay Thompson back, but I mentioned the LA boys, all three of them just not playing up to standard. Or even, I mean, I'm mean, going to count Russell Westbrook. I know he ain't made it in the last couple seasons, but I'm counting Rus Russell Westbrook. Um, there's and Damian Lillard, you know what I'm saying? Zion Williamson was a guy that was in there last year. There are so many all-star caliber players that are missing time. So the, the pool wasn't that big for the starters 
and the reserves, honestly. I mean, even Shea. I, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Shea because he's less efficient this year than he was last year. But, I mean, you can make a conversation for Shea being an all-star. But right now, he's injured. So, I mean, the, there's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to these things. I'm excited about these. I, I think that every year, we as, as fans overreact to snubs and who deserves to be where. And then after the game is over, nobody cares again because it was just like the topical conversation for the moment. So, like, yeah, LaMelo Ball didn't make it this year or Myers Bridges, or I even see Tyler Hero in my mentions, or Jared Allen in my mentions right now. I mean, we not going to talk about it after the All-Star game is done, honestly. I see some conversations in my mentions about Jalen Brown not making it um, over Darius Garland. But here's the thing. I know that the Boston Celtics, at least recently, have been really, really good. I think they've won the last 10 of their last 14 games. They're on a hot streak, and they're at the, but, but they're at the ninth seat right now. And I guess this comes to the conversation, similar to what I said, how much do you value how the team is performing and their impact on the team, or is it really just the 24 best players? Who is better at this point in their careers? I don't really know. You feel me? I don't really know. But it's hard to look at a number nine seed and be like, hey, here go two all-star players, even though they're both all-star caliber talent. Very interesting stuff, man. Enjoyed it. Leave it a like. Let me know in the comment section, snubs or whatever is on your mind. And I I'll talk to y'all in a little bit.